Hello, welcome to some functions, um, particularly investigating these functions. So we're going to be taking a look at this function right here, f of x equals x squared plus x minus 6, and we're going to do some investigations of it. So that pretty much just means finding some important information about this thing. Um, first of all, is it a function? Well, I can tell you that yes, it is a function. Um, I can look at my exponents here. My highest exponent is squared. I do not have any fractional exponents. I do not have any negative exponents. So we can actually come back to this and take a look, do a vertical line test once we see the graph of it a little bit later. So naming the function, kind of the same things that I talked about with those exponents. Um, this is a parabola that we are going to be dealing with. Next, we're going to step into our vertex or our locator point probably one of the most important points of the graph. Um, there are many, so I can't actually necessarily say that it is the most important point. Um, one quick way of doing this would be dealing with negative b over 2a, and then going right ahead and plugging that back into our function to get my y value. Um, there is another technique that I'll jump into a little bit later. Once we have our x-intercepts, we can average those two x-intercepts to find the axis of symmetry on this. So let's jump into our x-intercepts. We're going to go right ahead and we're going to factor this. Okay, the factors of negative 6 that give me a positive 1 would be negative 3 and a, excuse me, positive 3 and a negative 2, so x plus 3, x minus 2. Um, and we're looking for x-intercepts, so those have a y value of 0, so we can substitute that y value of 0 in there, which allows us to apply our zero product property. When we apply our zero product property, x plus 3 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0. Solving both those, those equations gives us an x value of negative 3 and an x value of positive 2. Those are both points, so we're going to substitute back in that y value of 0. Now we can jump into our y-intercepts, which happen to be a little bit easier most of the time. We are going to substitute in an x value of 0. So when I substitute in an x value of 0 into my original function, I get 0 squared plus 0 minus 6. Making that relatively easy, we get an answer of negative 6, and that is a y-intercept, so we have an x value of 0. I can put some of these points onto my graph now and take a look at how it's shaping up. So I get negative 3, 0. I get positive 2, 0. I get a y-intercept of 0, negative 6. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, that's starting to shape up. So now I can take a look at my vertex or my locator point. I mentioned it earlier. We can average these two values right here to find the axis of symmetry. So if I add negative 3 and a positive 2, I end up with a value of negative one. And since we're averaging it, we need to divide by how many we added up, which was a grand total of two. That is the x value of my vertex locator point, which would be the same thing as if you plugged in the values into negative b over 2a. So now, right there, we can take a look at the center of this, which is at x equals negative one-half. Axis of symmetry right there. So now I'm going to take my one-half value and I'm going to substitute it back into my original function, x squared plus x minus 6. So negative one-half squared would give me a positive one-fourth. Negative one-half in here for x would give me a negative one-half and I get minus 6. Now it's just a matter of finding a common denominator amongst all these. So I get a positive one-fourth. If I multiply top and bottom by 2, I will end up with negative 2 fourths. I need to multiply top and bottom of this fraction by 4, so I will get negative 24 over 4. When I combine my numerators, I get negative 25 over 4. If we convert that to a mixed number, we will get negative 6 and a quarter. That is, those are, excuse me, the coordinates of my vertex. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and a quarter. There you go, center point. Now we can get a good look at this, make sure the bottom rounds. It is a parabola, and it's going to shoot up and continue to go wider. And the same thing will happen on the other side. There's a look at our parabola, not the greatest parabola I've ever seen, but 
gets the job done. Now we're talking about domain, x values that are represented by my graph. So if I were to slide my pencil along here, where do I first encounter? And hopefully you're understanding that this shoots up and it continues to shoot up and as it shoots up towards infinity it gets wider and wider and wider. So if I were to slide my pencil right here, I actually am hitting it here, 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 and I do know that it is a pen, not a pencil. Sorry about that. So domain would be all real numbers. Range, pretty much the same thing, except we are working our way from the bottom up. So where do I first encounter my graph? And it just so happens to be the y value of my vertex, my locator point in this scenario, because my graph opens up. That happens to be the lowest point. So I first encounter at negative 25 fourths, and that point is included. It is solid line, so I give it the bracket, and it goes to positive infinity always using parentheses on that. Do I have asymptotes, spots in the graph that do not exist? I do not see any here. Everything that I can potentially think of to plug in for x should give us a value coming out. Do asymptotes exist? No. Is it a function? Back to that vertical line test that we talked about. Does a vertical line hit my graph two spots anywhere? And as you can see as I slide across, it only hits once. Is it a function? Yes, it is. So that's one example. I'm going to go through a second example, possibly a little bit quicker right here, just so you can see what's going on and get some more practice. Looking at it, is it a function? I'm going to go right ahead and say yes. We can confirm that in a moment. Name it. It is a parabola. Vertex locator point. Let's find my x-intercepts first, then we can average those two. If you'd like to do negative b over 2a, please feel free to do that. So the factors of negative 10, that give me a negative 3. That would be x minus 5 and x plus 2. Finding x-intercepts, so we get that y value of 0, so we can apply our zero product property. I get 5 comma 0, and I also get negative 2 comma 0. Okay, y-intercept. Looking at it, if I make that 0 and that 0, they just kind of disappear, and we are left with simply negative 10, 0 comma negative 10. So I can start to look at this graph, see how it's shaping up. Positive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 2, 1, 2, 0. Y-intercept, uh-oh, it's not going to fit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 somewhere approximately there. It's going to give us a nice sketch. Okay, let's average these two values together. So if I add 5 and negative 2, I will get a positive 3. I happen to be adding 2 together, so I'm going to divide by that grand total. That is my average, 3 halves. So that, as a mixed number, is positive 1 half. We can find our center point, positive 1 and a half. I might have said positive 1 half. Excuse me if I did. the axis of symmetry. It's going to be the same on both sides, just like a mirror. So if I take three halves now and plug it into my function, I can find the y value of my vertex. So three halves squared, that is three halves times three halves, which gives us nine fourths. Minus three, substitute in my three halves. Minus ten. Straight across here, negative 3 times 3 would be negative 9. 1 times 2 would give me 2. Bring down my 9 fourths. Bring down my 10. We need a common denominator here, so I'm going to multiply both by 2. I have 9 fourths minus 18 fourths minus 40 fourths. If I combine all these together, I'm going to end up with my value of negative 49 fourths. Converting that into a mixed number, we are going to get 40 is 10, 44 is 11, 48 would be 12, so we're looking at negative 12 and a quarter. So negative 12 and a quarter. There's negative 10, 11, 12, and a little bit more. That's going to be roughly where my vertex is. I can shape up my parabola here. Not the most balanced, excuse me, my surface is a little bit uneven. Below, domain x values that are represented sliding across. We have all x values that are represented. Range, coming up from the bottom, I first encounter my graph right there at that low point, which is represented by negative 49 fourths. And it goes all the way up to positive infinity. Bracket included, parentheses not included, infinity is an idea, not a number. Asymptotes exist, 
know. Thank you very much for playing. Have a nice day.